What's going on there, guys? Good Saturday evening. It's the Earthmaster here on this uh, November 5th, 2022 date. It's about 8.50 p.m. California time. And the latest quake shows a 3.0, or actually 2.7 down here, into the South America region right now. Uh, also a 4.9, it looks like, in the mix over here around the uh, Tonga region, it looks like. We have been seeing quite a bit of deeper earthquake activity downstream here uh, with a little bit of adjustment up towards the surface areas around Tonga recently. So kind of watching this area pretty closely. By the way, um, I played a couple numbers on the Powerball drawing, which is a lottery ticket. And uh, it's supposed to be one of the biggest ones in history. I got not a nothing not even a free ticket so <laughs> i don't play those too often but i figured i would since the jackpot was so large but uh, man look what i get nothing anyway good luck to those that uh played and hopefully won something uh what do we got for earthquake activity out here one earthquake here in the india area northern india up against the himalaya mountains here uh, major seismically hazard area, 4.6. And uh, getting a pretty good cluster of earthquake activity throughout the day today around uh, just south of the Philippines and also throughout the Solomon Islands area. Uh, kicking up pretty nicely uh, in terms of the multitude of quakes. Uh, far as the Indonesia area goes, just south of the Philippines, quite a few fours and some fives in there throughout the afternoon time period. Uh, nothing above. The 6.0 threshold yet uh, over here around the Solomon Islands and the Tonga area. The latest quake shows a 4.9 at 10 kilometers deep. Pretty shallow surface uh, activity kicking up there in that region. Uh, throughout the afternoon time frame, most of the magnitude's been in the 4 range uh, with a 5.1 there being the except exception around the Solomon Sea at 10 kilometers deep. Throughout the South America region over here around Chile, Looks like the latest quake shows a 4.6 into the Peru Chile Trench uh, at about 112, 112 kilometers deep. Uh, we have been noticing a little bit of swarming activity out here. One earthquake off the coast of Chile, a pretty shallow one, uh, just outside of Santiago, Chile, a 5.0. That one coming in overnight about uh, almost 1 in the morning. So a little bit of adjustment going on down there in the South America region. Into the South Sandwich Islands area, this earthquake about ready to drop off the map. This is actually from last night at 4.9. Into the Caribbean plate here, uh, a little bit of adjustment here to the west around Nicaragua area, 28 kilometers deep for a 4.4. That one coming in earlier this morning time frame. And uh, activity around Puerto Rico, somewhat spotty, but uh, getting close to the Puerto Rico trench over here again, 3.5. Uh, outside the Virgin Islands and also one very close here to the Puerto Rico Trench at 3.1, 39 kilometers deep. That one coming in earlier this afternoon time frame. Uh, what do we got here for the East Coast? Not too often do we see a little earthquake out here uh, off the coast of the uh, eastern portion of the country. I uh, got a 2.1 coming in near Nantucket. Is that right? Nantucket? Hopefully I pronounced that correct correctly. Uh, looks like a few folks did report feeling that earthquake. Not a big one by far, but uh, uh, just a little unusual earthquake activity out there. Um, yeah, a little odd, right? But uh, historical data uh, has been pretty active far as plate dynamics go. Years past, I'm talking thousands and uh, hundreds of thousands of years past. But uh, for right now, just one little earthquake up there. Uh, and, of course, in Missouri, we did see a 3.2 coming in to the Van Buren area, looks like. I believe that's the correct pronunciation. Uh, against the Ozark Plateau area. Uh, don't really see too much activity up here in Missouri, but got to remember the New Madrid Zone sits within this area, an interplate fault system. And that just uh, struck right outside of that area. Into the Oklahoma region, uh, man, quite a bit of severe weather over there uh, yesterday in that region. Seen quite a bit of tornadoes, unfortunately, but uh, spring and fall time do bring those uh, intense storms. 
Uh, a 2.0 outside of the Woodward area at 5.6 kilometers deep. I am not for certain if we have fracking up or, uh, well, we do. <laughs> I can already see it. If you guys spot these little, these little squares out here amongst the vegetation, we got one right smack dab at a uh, pumping operation out here. That's where that 2.0 struck at 5.6 kilometers deep. Enough said. Let's see what else we got here. Um, as we back out, uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing really shown up because this is the weekend. And again, USGS does not report anything here uh, in swarming uh, unless it's above 2.5 and above uh, for, for that uh, Yellowstone area. But uh, looking here on the map, there's not a whole lot. Even Pitchstone Plateau area showing very calm conditions tonight for Yellowstone. In fact, this is probably the calmest it's been in over two and a half months, I would say. Uh, this is windy vents up here showing up across the area of the park. This is not magma movement. It's not, you know, it, it, it's not magma movement. It's not anything to worry about. It's all wind environmental noise across the area of the park. That's going to be this darker color line here. Uh, indicating that environmental noise on the seismograph. Um, see what else we have. Pacific Northwest, not a whole lot going on out there. Uh, Northern California, we did see this earthquake here. North of Mount Shasta, outside of Doris, early this morning, a little 2.0. Nothing going on across the new the uh, Cascadia currently. Uh, and on that note, let's go ahead and check out the trimmer map for tonight. And there is nada, nothing. Zip zero is the key word tonight. Uh, yesterday we had about 20 something. Right now, nothing. And uh, it's, you know, it's not uncommon for it to happen. We do see these periods of up upticks and uh, periods of quietness. Uh, looking at the graph up here, the chart. You know, we just got through with a, uh, a pretty good extended period of tremor along the Cascadia subduction zone. This is not volcanic, but tremor between a major plate boundary here, here the uh, subduction zone of the uh, Cascadia. And uh, this, looking at this tremor count here, shows that we should be uh, entering into kind of a little lull of activity for at least a couple months or so. Uh, if this thing picks up, uh, like we've seen here over the last couple months, as far as the intense activity, I would be surprised. Um, that would probably pinpoint uh, something maybe picking up pretty drastically in the area. But uh, the only time that really picked up like that, similar following a major event, as far as the uh, tremor count goes, it uh, looks like back in 2020 we've seen a, a pretty good period of tremor activity in this range. Um, looks pretty, uh, let's see what we got for a tally back in 2020. Uh, yeah, we had about 16,000 epicenters of tremor. Uh, again, most of that though was up into the, uh, looks like the Washington area. But uh, either way, kind of keeping an eye on these little trends that go on uh, with the tremor. Uh, activity continues around the Clear Lake volcanic field once again. It's been uh, ongoing for quite a while. Pretty good cluster of earthquakes out here in this specific area. They, they must be pretty active here around this specific hydrothermal plant. And you notice that it's surrounding it pretty nicely there with about 42 earthquakes. And it um, looks like they're in operation, making sure they get rid of that sewage out there. Uh, it's a pretty interesting process. You guys got to check it out if you're not... Uh, um, weak in the stomach like I am. I, I don't really care for that. It's kind of a nasty process, but I guess something's got to be done, right? Um, San Jose, outside of San Jose here, along the Calaveras Fault Zone, a couple small earthquakes, and also along the Creeping Segment here, and also portions of the Park Field section showing some activity today along the San Andreas Fault. North of Santa Barbara, we've got 1.4 within the last hour. Not a major quake at all. And uh, looking at the southern portion of the state, things very calm for right now. Not a whole lot of activity. A couple small microquakes up and down. 
the uh, San Jacinto fault zone. But uh, other than that, things pretty mellow across the uh, southern portion of the state. Alaska has seen a little bit of uptick in movement. Uh, let's go ahead and key up the uh, 2.5 and above. I know we've seen a 4.6 coming in here to the Aleutian Trench uh, at about 10 kilometers deep. Now this area has a pretty high slip rate, uh, average slip rate here. I can't remember what it is. I think 60 or 70 mm per year. It's pretty high. And uh, this area does accumulate quite a bit of stress in a short amount of time. So I uh, wouldn't be surprised if we see some further activity larger than the 4.6 in this area. And of course, along the Kuril Kamachaka Trench, this is one of our hot spots uh, that we're watching for a larger earthquake, much larger than the 4.6 over there along the Aleutian Trench. Just a matter of time before that kicks up. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Covered that activity. Java Trench did see some movement at 4.5 uh, earlier this afternoon, 68 kilometers deep for this area. And the Earthquake 3D Globe here uh, pretty much verifies about the same activity that the USGS is reporting. Uh, looks like there may be a quake, another quake or two into the Tonga area that uh, is not being reported here by the USGS. Uh, in South America region, most of this activity, some older movement, a 2.7 though, does show the latest activity here on the globe. Uh, looks like it's about 111 kilometers deep. And uh, Puerto Rico, I believe most of that activity there was reported on the USGS map. Uh, so I just kind of like to keep an eye on this globe because this does have a pretty um, good date amount of data with it, uh, including the USGS and also the EMSC models. So it's very good to watch that uh, globe. With the data, uh, let's see what else we have up here. No further movement up north. This earthquake up there in Canada was from the uh, uh, about 1 o'clock in the morning time frame. But uh, we can go ahead and check the Earthquakes Canada map and see what we got. Uh, there's that activity being reported up north. 5.1 from the, the uh, Earthquakes Canada folk, folks there. Nothing really specific west or east along these normal areas. Got to remember most of the center portion of Canada is very similar to the center portion here of the states. You got the old uh, North American Craton up here. Uh, that extends well into Canada. It's a relatively stable land mass throughout the uh, last <laughs> last millions of years or so. You know, of course, while the uh, areas to the west and the east kind of deform around that uh, land mass. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Um, GeoNet servers. We'll go ahead and check them out real quick and see if we got any specific data, it looks like yesterday was the latest 3.2. Not a whole lot of activity currently listed up there on the map. Um, so we'll just kind of keep an eye on that uh, solar weather activity. Green, lots of greenery. I love greenery, uh, especially out uh, in the landscape, whether it's, you know, forested trees or green grass or whatever you want to grow that's green. Um, I'm a big gardener, so I like I like the greenery, but I don't like seeing the greenery on the solar weather activity because that means calm conditions. Not a whole lot going on. Only a 50% chance for a C flare currently, 5% chance for an M flare. Uh, looking at the current, let me bring up the current uh, mag magnetic sphere uh, data. Uh, these over here are starting to look a little interesting here, so. I'm paying a very close attention to these sunspots. That's a new group of sunspots coming around the bend on the northeast section of the sun. Um, all current sunspots that are facing us or that are departing the Earth side uh, facing of the sun look pretty minimal. So we'll watch these other sunspots. They are named 3141 and 3140. Uh, I think we need to watch 3141 for the most likely potential there of seeing any type of threat in the solar flare department. And right now, uh, 3141 just it looks like it harbors a beta class with a uh, somewhat of a strong 35% um, thirty-five probability of a C flare from that sunspot. 
Uh, no major coronal holes facing us. Uh, and uh, the three-day geomagnetic, forca geomagnetic forecast looks pretty calm. It's been a long day. I'm a little bit tired. The cold weather does that to me. As much as I love the cold weather, it kind of wears me down a little bit. Uh, I think I need to get back into, I don't know what, maybe jogging or something. Get the uh, blood flowing. Uh, current solar real-time, well, real-time solar wind looks pretty uh, neutral, pretty calm. Speed down there below the 500 range, in fact, about 450. The BTBZ BZ component looks pretty uh, stable at the same time. Density dropping off, so not a whole lot of potential out here for any type of uh, conditions there at the higher latitudes or mid latitudes. So um, I think that's about it, folks. Um, as far as volcanic hazards go, uh, Mono Loa is still just kind of a. Uh, we kind of skipped uh, the big island, didn't we? Let's go back here and double check that. Uh, I don't like it when I do that. But uh, it looks about the same as it has all afternoon. We did see this 2.8 come in as a 3.2. Um, actually, I think it was a 3.5. It got downgraded to a 2.8 by the USGS there for that Pahala earthquake. Northeast of Pahala, it looks like. Um but nothing major kicking up yet at the Mauna Loa area. So I'm just kind of watching that, kind of keep an eye on that pretty closely. Um, I do have a couple stations keyed up here around the Mauna Loa area, and that's going to be the Hot Caves station right here. So if you go on the live stream, uh, you'll see the seismograph station scrolling these stations. But uh, that's going to be the station there in Hawaii Hot Caves with a couple small spikes currently as we speak. Uh, one earthquake out there looks like in the Chile area. I believe that is the one uh, that we've seen uh, kicking up here. Ooh, what do we got here? 5.1. A 5.1 coming in out here in the uh, southern Atlantic Ocean area. Divergent boundary. A little new earthquake out there right now as we speak. But uh, the uh, Chile earthquake came from one of these uh, uh, smaller quakes up there on the globe. All right, uh, what else? I think that's about it. Um, you know, we covered the new Madrid zone a little bit earlier this morning. Definitely not skipping over that. Um, but uh, when there's no activity, there's no activity out there. And the eastern portion of the country for now is pretty quiet. Um, doesn't look like a whole lot of activity kicking up out there across the eastern portion of the states. On that note, folks, i got to go out and check my barbecue, make sure I didn't burn my tri-tip. do have a tri-tip out there cooking. Got to, uh, always got to make sure I barbecue out here on a Saturday night. Something I like to do when the weather's cold and um, blustery, I guess. <laughs> if you call 51 degrees cold, uh, I don't really call it cold, so that's kind of my barbecuing weather. I love barbecuing in colder weather. I think even if it was like down below freezing, I would still be out there barbecuing. Then I'm just that type of guy. All right, guys, have a good night. Stay safe out there, and uh, we will chat you guys very soon. Peace out.